Hello everybody, you're watching Mac Tutorial Films. I'm Orion and today I'll be showing you how to make a color corrected vignette in After Effects. And um, if you don't know what a vignette is, it is pretty much when you have darkness, blurriness, or color uh, on the edges, like so. You can see it's blurry on the edges. If I turn it off, you'll notice the difference. Um, so this is what we're going to be working on today. We're going to be working on color correction and blur. And um, I'm going to give you two different styles to check out uh, the inverted vignette or sorry uninverted in uh, vignette and the inverted vignette was pretty much just switching out the center color to the out edges and um, that's just we're gonna talk about that stuff later so but really what we're gonna be doing is going over color curves and auto color which are two important parts of this uh, color correction so uh, if you want to see how it looks like on gameplay, this is what it looks like. And if we invert it, or uninvert it, doesn't matter. This is what it looks like. It kind of has a vintage look. And on real footage, it'll look like this. So yeah, um, today we're going to be specifically working on the gameplay for this tutorial. So I'm just going to get rid of the real footage and show you how to do it on gameplay because I know a lot of people who are watching this are going to be using this for montage editing and whatnot. So let's get straight to the bottom of this by deleting these two layers and we can start from the beginning. Alright, so now that we have our original footage like this, um, you can tell the contrast is very low there's a lot of gray tint going on and it looks really ugly with that let's just begin with controlling the brightness and contrast and uh, if the, the whole uh, overall uh, idea of brightness and contrast if you don't know what it's what it really is it's the uh, contrast would be the grayness of the video so if if it's a low contrast that means there's a lot of gray like so and if there's a higher contrast the shadow the shadowing and the brightness will be in more depth so uh, let's just go over here to layer and go to new and make an adjustment layer and then we're going to talk about we're going we're to do it right here just right click go to effect uh, go to color correction and auto color and by the way we're going to be doing both the auto color and the curves on one adjustment layer and the second adjustment layer when we, for later will be a blur so <clears throat> for now let's talk about this so when you go to auto color, um, if you uncheck the effects box, this is good to check back and forth before and after, you know, your final result versus the old. And at already, just by checking the effect, you can tell the color is more vivid. Um, but this is not going to cut it, so we're going we're gonna to do our own adjustments by <clears throat> bringing up the uh, shadowing and the darker areas to maybe around 2-ish. And we're going to bring the whites up to uh, one, maybe. So there's a little bit of brightness. And you can adjust the uh, mid the mid-tones over here by checking this, but you don't really notice the difference. So don't, don't play around with this because we're going to be doing co color curves and it's not going to make a difference after all. Um, so now that we compensated the uh, brightness and contrast of the video, we're going to go straight into the coloring itself. And by doing this, we're going to right click on the adjustment layer again, go to effect, go to color correction, and go to curves. Now, if you use Photoshop and you use uh, channels, I mean, sorry, uh, curves, uh, you'll be familiar with it. So, same, same exact thing. If you are not familiar with this thing at all, don't worry. Um, we're not going to be working on the RGB. The RGB is the overall brightness and contrast control. So uh, this is how curves work. The top corner is the control for the highlights. So if we bring this up, it brings up the brighter areas and darkens the brighter areas. But if you go down to this corner, this corner is the control for the contrast. So it brings out the uh, shadowing to a brighter and it, it brings down the shadow to a dark if you burn, just drag it downward so up down same thing with this up down and this flat line is the reset button don't hit reset because that will just change all the channels 
And we're not going to be playing around with this. The reason why is because we already have the auto color, which did all the uh, brightness and contrast work for us. So we're just going to jump straight into the color itself. Now we got the red, and the color is it's going to be similar to what, what, I, what I talked about in the RGB, but only difference is with the, with the red, green, and blue channels is that we're controlling the shadows and uh, highlights for the colors. So again, the brightness of red will be up here. And if you want to bring down the dark, the shadowing, you don't want the shadows to be red. You want to bring it down. And you can also adjust the, um, you want to balance it out by bringing up the midtone. So if you hit another point, you can hit as many points as you want on curves. And that's good because it's uh, it's good for detail. Um, you know, it's, it's good for specific coloring. So if you want the shadows to be dark, you can maintain it by just bringing this down. But if you want the highlights, you can adjust it by bringing the, uh, the top corner up. So that's good. Uh, and let's just bring the reds up in the highlights. And we're going to give it a kind of orange look for this. So we're going to bring this down. And this will work the same way for any other color. If you want to have the color correction to be lenient towards green, you would have to have green as the dominant color, uh, meaning it, overall the midtones would have to be above the other colors. Same goes with blue, same goes with red. But in this case, we're going to be doing red, so you want to make sure the midtones are up. Let's go back to green and reset the green because you can't really tell what's going on. So the reds, we're going to bring the reds up a little bit in the highlights and bring it down to the shadows. Bring the midtones up, and you can lean it towards either the highlights or the shadows. So we're going to balance it up like this. Now, um, I'm pretty sure you are capable of understanding color mixing. <laughs> uh, you know, red with blue would make purple, or green with blue would make yellow. So when you play around with the color curves, you want to make sure that you know which color is closer to what. For example, if I wanted to make, if I want to avoid this turning to purple, I want to make sure the blue shadows are not um, going above or evening out with the shadows of the red channel. You want to make sure it's as far as possible. So the there's a the green is a even medium in between the two colors, so it avoids them mixing up. And same thing, same goes with the highlights. If you bring up the highlights, you see it's mixing up and it's making uh, purple because the red. This is where the highlights met up for red. So we're going to bring down the blues in the highlights. But you can bring up the midtones if you wanted to have a slight bluish overall color. Now let's go to the green and um, we're going to drag this up in the highlights a slight bit so we can neutralize the blue. And I'm going to drag down the green like this. Give it a dark color. And I'm going to bring up the highlights a bit because it's kind of getting dark on the outside. Just double check your red channel, double check your green channel and the blue. Make sure there's no uh, color interference going on um, unless you want it. But So let's go to the, the curves effects and we can just uncheck it and look at the before and after difference. Um, and it looks great. Uh, it has a vintage look. And if I uncheck the auto, see if we did the color curves without this, you notice there's low contrast and it just looks pretty gray. Um, and this brings out the shadowing. And if you don't like this and if it's overdone like so, you can just in decrease the black, the black clip, bring up, or, or actually bring down the whites slightly. You want to balance it out between the two. Alright. Um, and you can also blend the overall auto color with the original. It's kind of like the opacity, so if you bring it up, you're actually lowering the opacity because it's blend with original is the opposite of uh, opacity in transform controls. So let's just bring it up to maybe 50. I'll just leave it 50. Yep, looks good. Same goes with the color correction. Now we're going to create the vignette. 
In order to do this, you're going to select the adjustment layer and you're going to go to the ellipse tool and just double click it and it'll mask it out automatically. And the first option I showed you was this. It was inverted. If you go over here to the mask one, you can in hit the invert checkbox. And this is optional, whatever you want it to, to look like. But for now, I'm just going to do the um, this kind of vignette with the colors on the outside and the uh, you know the outer edges. And you're going to go to mask feathering, and you're going to feather it out. Just drag it, just drag it until it blends in. Maybe a little over 300. See, um, if you notice. The vignette is not covering, I mean, sorry, the, the color, correct, color correction is not covering everything. And the vignette is, you know, uh, kind of balancing out the colors between the original. And it, that's that's what's good about it, because you don't want to overdo the color correction. Um, let's just bring the blending down to maybe 40. Yeah, that looks good. Now, if you're going to invert it, make sure you go down to feathering and decrease the feathering because the masking is now going into the inward direction rather than going out. Because if I increase the feathering, it's going to go inward. So you want to decrease it maybe to 300 so you get this look. See. Now this is great. So if you're satisfied with this, we're just gonna move on to the blur, and we're gonna go right click, go to new, or go to layer new, adjustment layer. Right click, go to effect, go to blur and sharpen, and hit fast blur. Oop, hit the wrong thing. Let's redo that. Color correction. Oh. Blur and sharpen and fast blur. And we're going to make the blurriness to 10. And we're going to do the same thing. Select the adjustment layer and make a vignette by going to the ellipse tool, double clicking on it. And it'll give you this. And we're going to invert it. So we're going to go to masking and feather it out over 300, like so. Now for your for your gameplay, specifically Call of Duty, you're going to notice the kill feed is blocked by the blur, so in order to avoid that, we're just going to select this, go to the pen tool, and we're going to edit this masking by hitting the plus sign, hitting another plus. So we're going to take these two points and just drag it outward. And let's just drag this in so we get more blur on the edge. You can make your own uh, wacky designs and stuff. This is all customizable, obviously. But my style is to keep the blur mostly on the edges. I'm sorry, on the sides. Um, some people, if you want, you can just you can make it the opposite of the the, uh, the horizontal lines instead of the vertical lines. But whichever way they slow cool. Bring this up slightly. All right. So now you notice the uh, the kill feed's not being blocked completely. And if you have a PVR uh, recorded gameplay, you'll notice many people face this problem is that there's a black lining going on the right side and on the top. So for you people who have HD PVRs and you get that, just simply drag it out a little bit. That's all you have to do. Nothing, nothing fancy. Just do that. And you'll notice your blur is looking better because when you blur it out with the black edges, the black edges kind of blur inward, which makes it look really bad. So... Just a quick tip for that. And yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, invert. Um, let's go to the color correction for a sec. Adjust that. Um, if you want to add more color, just select the uh, adjustment layer and drag it in. Drag this out of the mask so you get more color going on and feather out more and yeah
That's about it, guys. Um, so if you have any questions, please ask in the comment section below or personal message me. And uh, if you want to see more tutorials like this, because I will be making more tutorials for montage editing and whatnot, uh, subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos. I have cool stuff like transitions and um, time warp, if you don't have Twixter. Um, but anyway, uh, check out the other stuff, and I'll be coming out with more. Stay tuned. Drop a like. This helped a lot. Thank you for watching, and yada, yada, yada. Bye-bye.